Hi, and welcome to this video um, dealing with two questions I think that are pretty common for students because the question becomes, all right, well, when can you really add or when can you really simplify terms in algebra? And I, I want to go through these two problems because I think they'll really build up your instinct here with algebra and get some of that process going where you start to understand what's happening. And we're going to look at it, um, you know, of course, algebraically, but also we'll experiment here with some numbers and plug them in to see what's going to happen. All right, so let's work on the first one here. It says, can the sum, right, so we're adding, of a to the second power plus a to the third power be written in a simpler form? In other words, can we write it in a way that's condensed, has less terms? Um, so the answer, well, let's not ruin it. Let's try some examples. If you're not sure, plug in numbers. So test, test some things out. Let a equal 1. We'll test that one out. And then we'll, we'll, pick, right, we'll pick a negative here. Let a equal negative 2 um, and to see what ha what's happening here. So if we let a equal 1, what's going to happen? Well, a to the second power is 1 to the second power. And then a to the third power is 1 to the third power, right? So this equals what? Well, 1 squared is 1, and, and 1 to the third power is also 1. So this is 1 plus 1, and that's 2. So, I mean, the question we often get from, from students is, can I combine these two? What could happen? And this is where you start to test things out. Don't memorize, test them out. If you simplified this by combining, that might mean something like a to the fifth power. Maybe that's your guess. Whatever your guess is, you're going to test it out. So if that's correct, if a squared plus a to the third is equal to a to the fifth, then when we plug our number in, we'll still get 2, right? Because here we solved it this way. Now we're trying it in a simpler form. If we get the same answer, then maybe they're equivalent. So let's try it. So what does that mean? Well, it means 1 to the fifth, which is just 1. So even with the case of 1, which is really not the oops, really not the best number to plug in, right? you want to try larger numbers, 1 itself has a lot of interesting properties, it might not reveal right, what's wrong with your logic. But here, even 1 showed us that a to the second plus a to the third can't be simplified as a to the fifth. That's not true. And again, the reason is we plugged 1 in, on this side of the equation we got 2, on this side we got 1, and 2 doesn't equal 1, so it doesn't work. And we can try that with a equals negative 2. What would we get? Well, a squared would be negative 2 squared, right? a to the third would be negative 2 to the third. Does that equal negative 2 to the, to the fifth? Well, well, we know it's not going to, so let's make another guess. Can we simplify this somehow as, as 2 a squared a to the third, right? Does that work? So 2 a squared a to the third, some kind of addition or, or something. Well, the answer is going to be no, because negative 2 squared is, is positive 4, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and negative 2 to the third is, is negative 8, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, times another negative 2 is negative 8. And that's equal 4 minus 8 is negative 4. But what would this be equal to? Well, this is going to end up being, well, 2, negative 2 squared, which is 4, and a to the third, which is negative 8. We're going to multiply 4, right? 4 times negative 8, and that's going to be multiplied by 2, multiplying all these different things. And right away, I'm sure you can see, right, 2 times 4 times negative 8, it's a, it's a negative number, of course, but, but it's actually equal to negative 64. It doesn't equal negative 4. So in fact, I mean, just by simple experimentation, it might look like there's no way to s simplify this term, and, and that's true. And the algebraic, I guess, or short way of saying it is that here you have two terms, two variables of different powers. So you can't combine them because a, when you square it, and a, when you cube it, or you raise it to the third power and second power, the numbers are going to grow at different rates. There's no simple way to add them, right? So this one, the answer is no, it cannot be written in a simpler form. Here though, in the second example, they ask us, can the product, so we're multiplying, of c to the second power times c to the third be written in simpler form? 
Now, multiplication is, is very different from addition. Even though multiplication is often thought of as repeated addition, multiplication allows us to combine terms that addition can't. Because here, what, it, it, what it's saying in a way is you have c squared groups of c to the third. Right? So in other words, even if c to the third and c squared are different, you're saying you have this many groups of this number. So of course you can combine them. Right? Of course you can simplify when you're saying you have this many groups of this number. Like for example, what if I had 4 times 5? Well, forget what the numbers are for a moment other than to say this means you have 4 groups right, of 5. So this will end up meaning 5 and 5 and 5 and 5 and 5 over and over and over again. Here this will mean you have c squared groups of c to the third. Now that's not so easy to write out as addition. But we can expand this in terms of multiplication. Here's what we do. Or I should say, here's one way that I think about it. C squared, what's that? What's C times C? Okay. What's C to the third? Well, it's C times C times C. And we're multiplying C squared and C to the third. So since this equals C squared and this equals C to the third, and we're multiplying everything, I'll put another multiplication sign here. And what you might see is that, okay, here there's parentheses, but the property of multiplication that we love is the associative property. That tells us we can regroup any way we want without changing our answer. So we don't need to have parentheses around these three C's. We can put them around everything. And now I think it's a little bit obvious or a little bit clearer that what you're going to have is C to the fifth power because we have one, two, three, four, five C's. And we're just multiplying all of them. So yes, when multiplying these two terms, right, especially when the bases are both the same variable c, the shortcut, which you might be seeing already, is just to add these two exponents, right? And I'll write it over here because that got cluttered. c squared times c to the third, right? Well, that's equal to 2 plus 3 equaling 5, right? You can add those exponents, and that's a nice shortcut. Anyway, I hope this helped. Thank you.